Hello, I hope you're fine. In this second video, I will explain you why has the United Kingdom decided to leave the European Union. The video will unlight four specific points. EU in brief, the growth of UKIP, immigration and democratic deficits. So let's start with the EU in brief. Few years after the war in 1950, the European Union is set up with the aim of ending the frequent and bloody wars between neighbours. There were six founding member states, France, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. Today there are 28 member states and some countries are still in process to join the EU, such as Albania or Serbia for example. 19 countries are using the euro, which creates the eurozone, but for example Sweden decided to keep its own money, the Swedish krona. The European Union is at least composed of 14 institutions, but let me explain the role of the five main ones. Firstly, we have the European Parliament, it brings together 750 elected members plus the president. The members represent 508 million of EU citizens. The number of members per country is proportional to its population. For example, the Luxembourg is a small country and therefore has only six members at the Parliament. The Parliament adopts and negotiates EU laws with the Council of the European Union. They also establish the budget. To pass a law or adopt a budget, both of the European Parliament and the Council of the EU have to agree. The Council of the EU doesn't have any fixed members. For example, if there are discussions on education, the ministers for education from each country will come and discuss together. Thirdly, there is the European Council. The members are the President, the heads of state or government of each EU country, plus the President of the European Commission. They fix EU's directions and priorities. They organize the political diary of the EU, and unlike the Council of the EU, they don't either negotiate or adopt EU laws. Fourthly, we have the European Commission. The commissioners are nominated, and there is one commissioner per country. The Commission proposes new laws to the Parliament and the Council of the EU. The Commission looks that the laws are correctly applied and ensures that the treaties are up to date. Finally, we have the Court of Justice of the European Union, which interprets and enforces laws. It fixes any violations of laws or disagreements between countries. It's composed of one judge per country, plus 11 advocates to help. Now let's talk about the British political party UK Independence Party or UKIP. Alan Sked established the party in 1991. In first place, it was called Anti-Federalist League. He changed the name in 1993 as UKIP. The growth of the party was at the beginning very slow. Then in 1997, Nigel Farage join Alan Sked with his faction. Nigel Farage became an important figure. He is born on the 3rd of April 1964. He left the Conservative Party in 1992 and was one of the former leaders of UKIP. He was leader of UKIP from 2006 to 2009 and from 2010 to 2016. He is a member in Parliament at the European Parliament and part of the Eurosceptic Party called Europe of Freedom and Direct Democracy or EFD Square. He is particularly known for his arrogance and provocating speeches. In 2016, he decided to take a step back of UKIP. In 2018, he started a new show in which he answers questions from people and explains his point of view. Now we will have a look at what factors influenced the quick growth of the party. 
Firstly, UKIP used a lot of different medias to spread its message, take back control of our country. Everyone has already heard this message, take back control. Here are two examples of signs used by UKIP. If you look at the second sign, 26 million people in Europe are looking for works. And whose jobs are they after? So it says that strangers are taking jobs of British people. And obviously, if British people think so, they will react with fear of foreigners and animosity, and it will increase their will to withdraw from the European Union. This xenophobic propaganda was really efficient and made UKIP winning votes. But now let's talk about immigration. The last couple of years have shown a rise of nationalism. The immigration question was an argument to withdraw because UK wasn't completely free to choose its immigration policies. People get scared of immigrants for different reasons which can't be backed up with evidence. Withdrawing from the European Union would mean that Brussels couldn't say anything about what the UK will do. Therefore, the UK will be able to close its borders easily and moreover, it's an island. For example, people think that immigrants don't pay any taxes and cost a lot to the NHS. In first place, they have to pay taxes on their income, but also for the national insurance and the NHS. Studies don't reach the same conclusion, so therefore we cannot know whether or not immigrants put pressure on NHS. People voted UKIP hoping that this anti-immigrant party would have the keys to stop immigration. But the thing which is interesting to know is that immigrants also have to pay a surcharge for the NHS. So the message of UKIP pushing for a nationalist country convinced people who were frightened of immigration. So the people who were scared of immigration, the people who just wanted a change and those who believed that UKIP had a solution to their problems helped the growth of the party. But now in 2018, it seems that the rising UKIP is slowed down after the local elections during which they lost 123 seats around the country. An observation which can be made is that immigrants are useful and contribute to economy. Let me show you how. When you are born until your first job, the state pays your health care and education. Then you work and pay taxes as an adult, and you are returning back the money you cost before and pay a bit for when you will get older. But it's not entirely, because now the medical technologies are so effective that you get older and older. So we don't pay as much as what we cost. Let's see about immigrants. Most of them have already received an education and the health care they needed as a child in another country. So they contribute during their working life and sometimes don't cost even anything when they are retired because they go back in their country. Even if they don't, they still cost less than native people. From that, we can draw the conclusion that immigrants cannot be considered as a burden for the economy. For the last point of this video, we will examine the democratic deficit mentioned by UKIP or other politicians such as the conservative Boris Johnson. He is born on the 19th of June 1964. He studied classics at Oxford University. He began his career in journalism but was sacked because he falsified quotations. He was mayor of London from 2008 to 2016. In 2016, he was appointed as Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs. During the Brexit campaign, he was first a Remainer, but then he switched his mind and fought as Lever by Farage's side. But let's come back to the question of the democratic deficit. The message of UKIP was also linked with sovereignty. The message suggested that only politicians hold power 
and that people can't say anything in politics anymore. It also suggested that UK is following all the rules voted in Brussels and that there is no more room to create its own. Maybe we should first understand correctly some words. Sovereignty is the power that a nation has to create laws and apply them. In UK, for example, the Parliament has the sovereignty and is the supreme legal authority. It can end or create any laws as long as it doesn't contradict any other laws in effect. Then something which is democratic respects the characteristics of a democracy. Democracy is a form of government in which the sovereignty or power is vested in the people and exercised directly by them or by their elected members under a free electoral system. And the deficit is something which is deficiency. It happens, for example, in budget, when you spend more than what you earned. You are facing a deficit. So, a democratic deficit is when people don't have the entire power because it has been taken somewhere else. So, this is what happens within the United Kingdom. The democratic power has been divided and a part of it is now in Brussels. Nigel Farage is claiming everywhere that the EU project is a big conspiracy, but he forgot that by standing in the parliament he becomes an actor of this supposed conspiracy. Himself is taking a bit of the sovereignty of the population and therefore participating in this democratic deficit. He is living out the fact that in his own country a part of the parliament isn't even elected, the House of Lords. So when in the country itself there is already a lack of democracy, I don't think that the argument saying that Brussels imposes law is meaningful. However, people judge it true and therefore voted to leave. In summary, the United Kingdom seems to have left because people wanted to have control on borders and get their sovereignty back from Brussels. Here are some pictures to summarize the whole video and I will see you for the next video I will do on Brexit, which will be the last one I will do on Brexit and have a wonderful day. Bye!